welcome to this video and in this video I wanted to have a look at lenticular galaxies. So we might be familiar with galaxies like the spiral galaxy, elliptical galaxy, maybe even a regular galaxy, but lenticular galaxies are a little bit unusual um, and they sit kind of in between spirals and ellipticals and we want to have a look at what one is and maybe how they get there. So if we first have a look at the Hubble galaxy classification, so this is like the, the, the galaxy tuning fork as they call, and there's two distinct groups. You have spirals on the right hand side and ellipticals on the left hand side, and they are then split into barred spirals at the bottom and normal spirals kind of at the top. There are actually an intermediate one sometimes in the middle in between bars and the non-barred spirals where they kind of have like a weak bar. But anyway, on this particular tuning fork, spiral galaxies will, will evolve through time from the right hand side to the left hand side. So here, the spiral arms will get tighter. As they evolve, they will lose their gas, they'll get redder. Um, so that's how they evolve on this particular diagram. So spiral galaxies, so these have obviously got spiral arms, they're fairly obvious to see. They've got plenty of gas in, they undergo star formation because they've got gas, so that gas collapses and it feeds recent star formation. That then results in having populations of young blue stars because they have the gas to do so. And as they age, obviously the gas gets depleted, the stars will age and become redder, and the spiral arms will get tighter. So that's a spiral galaxy. Your elliptical galaxies sit on the left-hand side of this classification tuning fork. And they are classified mostly by their shape. So they don't necessarily evolve from right to left, left to right. The E number that they get relates kind of to their shape, which is mostly down to their orientation. So whether they're spherical or more cigar shaped could be down to just how we're seeing them. So they are classified by their shape, not necessarily by how they evolve. And they sit on that side. So elliptical galaxies, they don't have any recent star formation because they don't have any gas in them. They're completely gas depleted. And because of that, they have populations of old red stars. So they don't have young blue stars because they don't have any gas to basically feed recent star formation. So completely different to spirals. They obviously don't have spiral arms. They're fairly smooth and spherical looking or more cigar shaped, depending on what type it is. So the spirals themselves will evolve into ellipticals. So they will merge. So one of the, the main theories of how we get elliptical galaxies is that the spiral galaxies will collide and merge into large elliptical galaxies. It also destroys a spiral arm. It causes a rapid star formation, which depletes the gas. So all the gas gets depleted. And that is one of the ideas of how you get elliptical galaxies. Now, on the tuning fork, you can see that actually the spirals evolve right to left. So they then end up as ellipticals, assuming this one here. Now, lenticular galaxies sit in between. So they are disc-like. So they're still disc-like and they rotate around the centre. So they, the disc structure, they rotate, but they don't have any spiral arms. They don't really have any gas. So they're gas depleted, but they've got lots of dust in their disc structure. They have populations of old stars. They don't have any recent star formation because they don't have any gas. So they share common features with a spiral galaxy and an elliptical galaxy. So they have no gas, lots of dust, like elliptical galaxy, populations of old red stars, again, like elliptical galaxy, no recent star formation, like elliptical, but they have a disc-like structure with a net rotation, which elliptical galaxies actually don't have. They are a bit more random in their motion. They don't have a net disc-like structure. So they kind of share features between the two types of galaxies. And as a result of that, they kind of sit in between. So between the spirals on the right and the ellipticals on the left, they sit here in this S0 section here. So this is where your lenticulars are going to sit because they do share features of both. Now, how do they actually get there or what forms them? Well, there's a few ideas, actually. The three of the main ideas that they, well, first one of the three is that they could be a faded spiral galaxy. So these could be a spiral galaxy that have lost their arms. 
They no longer have a spiral arm and they've used up all of their gas. So all of the gas has been formed into stars and it's, a, it's basically a late stage spiral galaxy. Now, if that was true, we can go to the Tully-Fisher relation, which is basically a relationship between the luminosity of a spiral galaxy and its rotational velocity. And there's a trend where if you, you know, with a set luminosity, it will have a set velocity, rotational velocity. And yeah, there's basically a trend in relationship there. Now, if lenticulars were a form of spirals that evolved and faded and got dimmer, it should show the same dynamics, but at a lower luminosity because they're faded. Now, when you do do these plots, they do generally show that. So you've got two sets of data there. One is the spiral galaxies, one is the lenticular one. And you can see that actually the blue line is a bit further up, which means that it's shifted to a lower luminosity. Because luminosity is actually, the way it works is the lower the number, the higher the luminosity, or the magnitude, I should say, actually. So if there were faded spiral galaxies, it should show exactly the same, but it will be shifted on the plot, which is what's seen here with the Tully-Fisher relation. Now, they can lose their spiral arms due to tidal harassment. What does that mean? Well, it means there has been some gravitational interaction by nearby galaxies that has distorted them, and it can disrupt those spiral arms and dissipate them. So there could be some tidal harassment, which has meant that their spiral arm structure has been lost. Now, one of the problems to that is that some lenticulars are brighter than spiral galaxies, so they're not generally a faded spiral because they're actually brighter. Now, one scenario for that could be that they are merging spirals, and in some scenarios, they can retain their disc-like structure, they would increase their stellar mass, which would make them brighter, and they would deplete their gas because of the merging process. So they could be spiral galaxies that have merged, and that could explain some of them. And then the other one is that they could actually have grown their disk from accretion of gas. So you could have had this more spherical-like gas structure around and it accreted from that to form a disk, and that's how we end up with a, with a lenticular. So it was more of a large structure that actually kind of accreted a disk-like structure from the gas that was more spherical to start with. So there's kind of three main ideas, really, to how they get to where they are. But I will leave it there, and thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, you can check out some of the other videos.